Anchor again, already? Well, yeah, this was another one of the newer released products and has been getting a lot of requests, so here it is. I think my review will be quite different than a lot of the others out there. I have tested a lot of 140 watt adapters, but none with the built-in power outlets, so this one could be a nice addition to the power adapter collection. In this thin form factor, it certainly looks appealing, and they added some cool new features like a screen and a button. As usual, I have no idea what to expect on this one, so it will be fun to explore how this power adapter performs. A negotiation with multiple port operation will be looked at, along with other features and functions. I do have the 240 watt adapter here as well. I will probably not get to that one until January though. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is linked in, as well as the super button, thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. Okay, here it is, the Anchor Prime 6-in-1 charging station, 140 watt with model number A9128. This adapter comes in the retail-friendly Anchor packaging, a big box. I wonder if there is more in this one. I don't see mention of a cable, but it would be nice if it comes with one. In the box is the power adapter wrapped for our protection, the power cord, and a user manual. No USB cable. The power cord is the same style as the other thin power strip from Anchor with the proprietary 3-pin connector on the end. Not too much of a fan of that. It is 16 gauge though. The power strip, power adapter, no, charger, no, power station, hmm, power meter outlet adapter kebab looks pretty slick. It has a very shiny exterior and it is very fingerprint sensitive. Dust sticks to this thing like crazy. It has four USB ports, two C and two A, as well as two AC power outlets. The AC power outlets do this kind of pop-up thing when you plug things into them. It's kind of neat, but you know, the thinness for sake of thinness doesn't make it better. Courage. When we flip the kebab around, we can see that this adapter has a safety listing, which is nice to see, but it is lacking the Department of Energy 6 mark on the product. We can compare it to the requirements still, and I'm guessing it's not going to meet the requirements. It is guessing. I totally know already. When digging into the user manual, we get some things to tell you how to plug it in. They do go over the display and what it can do, which is nice. We'll look into that a bit more later. The actual modes of operation and details of the device are in text blocks in the user manual. It is a bit confusing to read what is there and what is the main thing it can do. The thing I see here lacking is the description of the PPS modes that it can do. So of course, I'll be testing that too. Before plugging it in, I want to check how the earth pin is connected. It looks like the socket is grounded as expected. The USB outlets are not connected, at least with any DC potential on the USB side. I need to get an AC leakage tester to do more checks on this, but it seems okay. So let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is that it takes high idle power consumption. This means that it does not meet the DOE requirements right off the bat. The adapter isn't far over the line, but it is over, although it didn't make the claims of meeting it at least. Now that it is on, time to look at that shiny display. It is very similarly stylized to the power bank's anchor is selling now. It looks like the button changes mode to different views. Total watts, watts on each port, volts and amps on each port. It also looks like the display does tell you if you have an e marked cable plugged in. Time to plug in a cable and see what modes of operation this one has and if it has any special tricks it can perform. Can I stream video to the tiny display? No, you can't. But if you press and hold the button, you do get the little anchor animation thing. For modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, 20, and 28 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode or variable voltage mode, which can be more efficient for charging. In this case, it's 16 volts with one port plugged in and 11 volts with both USB-C ports plugged in. I was not able to go above 4.8 amps on these modes, so not quite 5 amps. This may work and then trip out when trying to do the 45 watt Samsung super fast charging. It should support two devices at 25 watts, no problem though. This is kind of my first complaint on this device though, is why not three USB-C ports and one USB-A port? The 28 volt mode does mean this can deliver all 140 watts of its output into one port. There are still relatively few devices that can actually use this mode though, so most of the time it's a 100 watt single port device. The power renegotiation is the same as most of these USB power adapters. Any powered plug or unplug causes a renegotiation of the outputs. The USB A port can even trigger this. With no load, I found that sometimes it won't turn the port off in between, but that was with no load. Anytime I tried changing the ports with something connected, 
That is when I ran into the issue of renegotiation. The data on this one is, well, data. It isn't bad efficiency-wise. It is consistent in efficiency from 10% to 100% load. The issue here is that the efficiency isn't the real efficiency. At this power level, losses in the line matter. We'll talk about that a little more later on. The voltages were on the low side, barely in tolerance. The ripple voltage was worse than others as well. Not the worst I've seen, but not great. There was quite a bit of noise on the output line as well. Not sure how fast this thing switches, but it dumps a bunch of garbage out with the DC power. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. The adapter tripped at a safe level and recovered after removal of the fault. I would think it would be able to protect sooner with the display showing clearly it was way over the rating, but 165 watts was the trip point. The PPS one point in use trip point was 80 watts at 16 volts and at 47 watts with 11 volt PPS mode. I took thermal images of this one at 15 minutes and 30 minutes to see how it was going. After 30 minutes, the case of the power station strip adapter charger was at 61 degrees C. It was on its way to hot, but thanks to the fairly large radiating surface, it isn't the worst I've seen. Still pretty warm. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. Well, this is the first 140 watt adapter I've found that doesn't have it. I'm not sure if Anchor just got lazy, but they designed a decent performing 140 watt adapter already that should easily have been able to fit in this case. Here's a comparison of the Rokerin and the Anchor doing 140 watts on the output. It's like roll reversal. I did this a month ago, but it was the Rokerin that was bad on the adapter. No consistency. One of these adapter shapes doesn't look like the other. Oh well, it is what it is. The efficiency that shows would be reduced by about 3%. Not huge, but in the scheme of competition, that really makes it the worst one. Okay, time to get some weights on this thing. The packaging was a bit on the heavy side for a fancy box at 115 grams. The actual adapter with power cord wasn't terrible though at 461 grams. The Rokerin adapter for comparison weighed 272 grams, which is pretty typical for a standalone 140 watt USB-C power adapter. Time to compare the data. I have tested quite a few adapters in the 140 watt arena, so plenty to compare to. When comparing the idle data to the others, there were a few lower wattage options and a few higher wattage options. Anchor actually has the lowest wattage adapter here, but somehow forgot how to make things with this one. This means the 6-in-1 is one of the worst. The Bassia still has the crown for the worst in class at the 140 watt power level though. On the idle graph, they look pretty well spread out. I am still shocked at how good one anchor is and how bad the other anchor is. The display isn't using that much extra power, I hope but I guess it matches what most of the competition is doing. Apple has an honorable mention here of being quite good as well. When comparing the overall data with other adapters in terms of efficiency and power consumption, they're all basically the same with the exception of the Bassius, which is worse again. The power quality of the anchor is very low though, so it pulls it down to a lower spot on the scale, which is unusual for the 140 watt power class. The peak to peak amp draw was over 20 amps. On the average power consumption graph, one of these dots is in a different place. I wonder if the 6-in-1 was even considered a power adapter that might need PFC or something to help make it perform a little better. No idea. Just keep thinking about the cool display. That makes up for it, right? Let's talk about value. I picked a range of adapters in the 140 watt range. For what you get, the Anchor 6-in-1 actually doesn't look too bad. You get two power outlets and four USB ports. It isn't the best value unless you get it on sale, but that's the case for any of these chargers. And so it doesn't quite class out the clone city adapters like the Roserin plus others, but it's not bad. It is newer, so the USB ports are a bit more refined, but they're still not that great. The value makes me think about it at least for a few minutes before choosing something else. Okay, well this Anchor 6-in-1 charger and power strip is something else. It tries to be a lot of things and it has a lot of show off moments, but it is all flash and it really doesn't seem to be able to stand up performance wise to even other products from the same company. Forget about other companies. On the positive, it delivers the power it says it can. It has a cool display and the display is fairly accurate. It is very refined and more attractive of a product than a lot of the other standard power strips out there. I could see this having a place on your desk as opposed to under your desk. 
The adapter does have PPS and it does have multiple port about 45 watt charging in the 11 volt mode. It doesn't quite make 5 amps though, so mileage may vary. It can share power more evenly than a lot of other 140 watt adapters. The negatives. The USB renegotiation feels like taking a few steps back for a modern product. Under any loads, the power disconnects with every plug and unplug. Even with the USB-A port, it causes the USB-C port to shut down. In the real world, this can lead to issues like charging loops and difficulty with more than one device plugged in. The power supply is a bit out of date compared with the competition, meaning even if the efficiency numbers look okay, it is really worse than you see. The voltage ripple on the DC output was not great. It is also rather noisy under heavy load and carried a fairly significant 60 hertz AC ripple too. It's a fingerprint magnet also. So maybe on the desk, but behind an acrylic case. So what does that all mean? It's a nice looking adapter. It is nice having the power sockets, but it looks like they really crammed it with lots of features for features sake, but it lacks the power supply side to actually make it great. For me, this is a skip. I had high hopes for this one too, and it turns out it's just not for me. Okay, time to apply the sticker. This is tested and on the database, and it isn't in a great spot. It's really only good in one area, real power efficiency. Everywhere else, it's kind of not great. This is certainly not the one for me, but if you want one, there will be an affiliate link down in the description that gets me a couple percent and costs you nothing. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be putting these two higher wattage power adapters head to head next week to see which one can meet its claims and if either is any good. There have been many requests for these as well, so I finally got my hands on the one I was waiting for. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have too many more of these adapters, so many more videos in the future. Goodbye.